recently I took a look at this nest and fixed it. Now, I want to point out, these nest thermostats, these are actually called the heat link units, and they power the remote thermostat, but they also receive a signal back that then controls relays, which switches the mains power. So these units do potentially contain mains at 240 volts in the UK. Keep this in mind if you open them. However, now I've got another dead one to look at. Um, I can check some things out. Is it the same fault that's happened? Is it, uh, has it got the same arrangement of two different capacitors? I'm going to take a look inside and see that. But it turns out that there's a very simple test you can do to check if it is the 12 volt power supply that's failed. If you loosen this screw in the bottom, it can be done while the unit is in situ. Uh, and you just loosen it and lift the lid up like this. It reveals the electrical connections and a USB port. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point in time that if you're not used to working with mains electricity, you should turn the power off before taking the cover off. Um, for an electrician, it'd be quite useful to probe in there and see if it was getting 240 in the first place. But uh, as I say, turn the power off to the heating. Also worth mentioning that just to treat it as if it's live anyway, because with the new era of one week electrical training and everybody becoming an electrician, there are increasing numbers of instances of backfeeds coming from new heating circuits to the existing heating. Let's not even go there. It's a bit of a cesspit. But as long as large privately owned companies are making lots of money, I guess that's okay. Now, notice the little LED indicators here that I shall shield from the light. This is a micro USB cable connected to that fetching pink power bank. And I'm going to plug it in to the USB port and it's going to feed into the low voltage circuitry. The LEDs are going to light, the circuitry is going to work, but the relays are not going to click because they need the 12 volts. That kind of shows the circuitry is kind of working. There is another test that can be done. If we bring in a meter set to diode and continuity, then the 12 volt supply here that feeds the remote thermostat appears to be basically connected directly to the 12 volt bus in here. So if we turn this on and we put it around one way, normally we'd get a diode one way and the sign of a capacitor charging. I'll show you it in that one. In this one, we're just getting a dead short circuit in either way around in those connections. So that kind of suggests the 12 volt is dead. Very intriguing. I wonder why this has happened. Let's pop this one open. I'll show you what you should see if the 12 volt is not dead. For a start, uh, if you set it to voltage while this was powered, you should get 12 volts on this. But if it's not powered, here's what you would get. If the diode and everything was intact, you would get a rising voltage round this way, which indicates a capacitor is charging, and round the other way, you would get basically a diode voltage drop of about 0.535, which is the diode I put in. Probably less if it's the original Schottky diode. So that's quite an interesting couple of tests you can do. But now, let's pop the back off this. Let us open it up and see if it's exactly the same fault that occurred before. If there's a suspicion it is that diode, I shall pop that out. And we'll see if it clears. Find a replacement. Uh, find a replacement turned out to be quite tricky. None of my usual... Uh, proper, real, not eBay, electronic suppliers had that exact diode. That's annoying. So unscrewing the back here. This is also an indication. It's, it's made sense of another product. Why they have... Oh, this double side tape's quite handy. It means you can just stick that off. Uh, it's why they had a couple of diodes in series. So here's the mains power supply section. There is the suspect diode, which ultimately I get the feeling this is going to be short circuit, isn't it? Continuity on. Is it going to go beep? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I reckon that diode's screwed. Right here. While I've got this open, and before I change that, I just want to take a wee peek in here because the other unit had two different uh, styles of capacitors and I wondered if one had been changed at some point or if they'd put in two different types of capacitor just as built in redundancy in case one of them failed which is quite a clever approach putting two diodes in series is also a clever approach but they'll be wiser for that I wonder what made it fail in the first place this has a ribbon cable attached but I'm just going to lift it gently at this end without stressing that too much 
It has the same two different styles of diode. Okay. Uh, cap uh, capacitor, should I say. That's quite interesting. That is quite educational. Now, what I was saying there about the multiple diodes, I was perplexed. When I took another product apart recently, it was the uh, Threevolution air freshener. And on the Threevolution air freshener, there was a series diode from the main supply and then two current limiting resistors for the power supply. But on the back of it, there was... So this diode here to start off with, that went up to there and then it went through a surface mount diode. So two different styles of diode, the through hole and the surface mount, but in series. And the reason for that is if one of those went, if there was just one that went short circuit, these resistors would then operate at full power and they'd be dissipating their two in series. They'd be dissipating roughly one watt each, which is still within the rating, but it would, the unit would stop working and it would also potentially, uh, it, well, it's operating these resistors at their limit. It would get quite warm inside, and not in the bit that does all the proper oil vaporising stuff in these. But also, because there are two diodes in series, if, say, for instance, this surface one, surface mount one, one, surface mount one went faulty, this one will still work. And it adds a layer of redundancy in having those two diodes in series. That's quite useful to know. I shall keep that in my mind for future. Right, tell you what. I'm going to desolder this, and I'm going to actually get two soldier irons and get into it because uh, it's better to tweeze this out. So I'll pause momentarily, and I'll be back in one moment once I've removed that. Okay, let's try getting this rogue diode off, and I'm going to tweeze her off with my old Ad Antex XS25 soldier iron. This is what they call a thermally balanced soldier iron. It puts 25 watts on, no temperature control. It's all based on the size, the mass of the bit, what temperature it gets to. So I'm going to use that one side of this component because it's very difficult to solder owing to the fact it's got a huge heat sink pad underneath it. And the other side, I'm going to use another solder and I'm going to try and tweeze it off. This may not go to plan. Uh, I've already wetted the pads. I know that the one on the left is just going to be so... There it goes. Oh, that wasn't too bad, was it? Oh, I dropped it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's kind of worked. Right, get off. There's that pesky pad underneath. See that shiny area underneath? That is annoying. Do you know, it's disappointing. It looks as though they've made an effort to use a decent diode and it's just let them down. Such a shame. I don't blame the designer for this problem at all. I wonder if part of the problem is the fact that that 12 volt goes out to external circuitry. I wonder if it's an ESD thing, but I'm not really sure. Very hard to say. Right, I'm going to uh, just go and grab another diode and then try soldering it on there. One moment, please. Okay. Let's clean the excess soda off with a bit of uh, soda wick and some fresh flux squirted onto that soda wick so it's extra juicy because that helps soak it up. And we'll just dab it on that pad to clean it off and scrub it a bit to clean those pads. That's looking pretty good. Now, diodes. I ordered the closest I could get, 3 amp 60 volt diodes. This one is comically huge. This one is a SS36 shame, really memorable name, but it's actually just too big for this. This one is just, it's called PMEG6030 EP, but it's just marked AB and is just a bit squirmily small for that. The one that won my choice, whether it's suitable or not, is the B360B, which does fit in fairly well, but it's quite a deep diode. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to flow some soda onto here, and then I'm going to reflow it and sit the diode onto that, holding it with tweezers, and I'm going to make sure I put it on the right way around. That would be really, really good. Uh, I have got my Big Daddy soda iron here, my Antex on, so I'm just trying to actually not touch it with my, get burnt off it. <laughs> Right, tell you what, so I'm going to sit that diode up. Make sure that the little lines are going the right way. You can probably see this better than me. Yeah, that looks like it's going the right way. If it didn't, it, the power supply just wouldn't be happy again. Uh, it wouldn't harm it, but it would just not be happy. It wouldn't actually boot up properly. So I'm going to reflow those while pressing down. I think I might just do this with my fingers, to be honest. This is probably a bad idea big clumsy bear that I am. 
but anyway, I shall attempt to... No, this is... <laughs> See, surface mount is a curse for people my size. Right, tell you what. Mm -hmm. Right, that's... Uh, that's promising. I can see soda flowing. Right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You're going to have to excuse any clumsiness here. It's just because, well, big fingers. So I'm going to move that over there so I can get the other side sorted. Now, I'll come back to this side after I've done the other side because uh, it will need reflowed. I'm going to use the Antex on the other side because it's got a bit more oomph and there's that huge solder pad underneath. So I'm going to flow some soda in using the Antex. And it is uh, one of those components that has the lead folded round underneath. So it should theoretically flow and do a decent job in that heat sink, the heat sink pad underneath. And then coming back to the side, I'm just going to reflow this again. And add a bit of fresh soda so there's plenty of flux. And that will hopefully be it. Right, I'm going to unplug the soda iron before I burn myself. And I'm going to let that cool down. I'm going to hook up the mains to it, and then we can see if it works. One moment, please. OK, I've not plugged it in yet. I thought we'd share the moment together. Just in case it explodes, it always makes good entertainment. So I'm plug it in now. Relays click. The unit is back, working again. This is good. Right. I don't know if that's the ideal diode for that. It's got a slightly lower voltage rate than the previous one, but it is supposed to be exposed to 12 volts-ish. But anyway, it is the 3 amp, although I kind of doubt it's uh, the size always makes me squirm, these tiny little 3 amp diodes. However, the band of it, I should have mentioned, is pointing towards this processor type chip. It's not a processor, so I'm not sure that is. But that big chip, the little band on it, uh, on the diode, is pointing over to that way. It also goes towards the uh, the biggest, the hardest pad to solder. Look at all the flux around that. I should clean that off, shouldn't I? Yes, I should. But anyway, I'm going to put this back together, and that will be it fixed. So that uh, diode I used was, the, the one that fitted was a B360B. Uh, it's order number from CPC, if it's even the right one. I'm, I'm not taking liability for this because, uh, you know, I don't want to say everybody swap them for this. Um, but it's SC17585. Uh, I was quite happy, to be honest. It was an easier repair using the uh, leaded diode, the one that I just went onto this pin of the transformer and over to the large pad. But I'm not sure what current the external unit actually draws from this. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. I don't think unit is actually going to be anything remotely near an amp total. But uh, that is it. So, yeah, that's that's a fix, I guess. I suppose I could give it back and they could try it and see how long it lasts. But that's strange. So disappointing that a reasonably good-looking design has been let down by, by such a thing as a diode. And it does show you there is space in the vicinity there. They could have put two diodes in series, possibly, um, and actually alleviated that problem because if one of them had gone short circuit, the other one would potentially have kept the party going until it went short circuit, but then that would have half the number of returns. But there we go. That is it fixed.